Hello Freedom Seekers, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead. It's been a while since we've done a video, but we're gonna give you some updates here on the homestead, and then we're gonna head inside and cook a rabbit-based dish. Well, a new year brings new plans here in southeastern Michigan, and uh, one of the things that we've got going on is I'm prepping to get breeding stock for sheep this year. And uh, this right here is gonna be our new sheep structure. It's gonna be a four by six run-in shelter, excuse me, four by eight run-in shelter. It's gonna be fully solar powered to run the electric fence, a water pump, and all the things necessary to keep these sheep going year round. So we'll have some more information about this coming up and some updates as we get it finished up. I'm also gonna be heading out uh, to the garage. I've gotta work on getting some hair hangers built. We've been doing a lot of business with hair hangers as I think as people are prepping for the upcoming year. And uh, we're just really happy and excited with how well they've been received in the rabbit raising community. After we hang out in this beautiful southeastern Michigan snow for a, a little bit, I'll be heading inside and we're gonna make some buffalo rabbit chili. Really good for cold days, nice and spicy, and the rabbit's a great substitute for chicken. Well, I finished up the preparation of the hair hangers, back inside, now it's time to get started on the buffalo rabbit chili. Like I said, you can take pretty much any recipe that has chicken in it, put rabbit in it, and it's gonna turn out just fine. Just one more quick note before we do get started. Remember, rabbit is a leaner and potentially drier meat, so it's important to add a little bit extra fat or a little bit of extra broth anytime you're cooking with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a couple tablespoons of ghee into our pot. You can use butter, olive oil, Whatever oil you prefer to use, we like to use ghee. All right, into our pot with the melted ghee, we're gonna add two pounds of ground rabbit. This is stuff that we have ground and has been frozen for a little bit. Before the rabbit went in the pan, I went ahead and prepped all of my aromatics, celery, carrots, and onion, about a cup of each, maybe a little bit extra. I like it in my soup. The rabbit's fully cooked. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the meat from the pot and get started with our aromatics. All right, before the aromatics go in, we're gonna add just a little bit more ghee. About two teaspoons. Keep the ghee handy just in case. Get that heat up, spread it out in the pan, and I'm gonna add in the aromatics. Onions, carrots, and celery. We're gonna cook that down until they just start to soften a little bit. Our aromatics have just started to soften up a little bit, and the reason why they're called aromatics, they really enhance that flavor. Now it's gonna be time to start adding our spices in, our seasoning. Uh, we're gonna start with some pressed garlic. We add the garlic at this point because we don't want it to burn. And if you add it with the rest of your aromatics, it's gonna burn. You could use dry garlic if you want to. All right, next thing is cumin. We're gonna use about a teaspoon of cumin here. You can adjust to taste as you go. We're gonna use about a half a teaspoon of cayenne. If you want it a little hotter, add more. Um, we like to leave the heat to the Frank's Red Hot. All right, and last but not least, some smoked paprika. We use this in a lot of our cooking. I really like smoked paprika. It adds some sweetness, some depth, and just everything that you need to really make a lot of recipes pop. And we're gonna do about a tablespoon of smoked paprika. This is gonna add depth, smokiness, and color, all right? All right, so smoked paprika. And then we're gonna stir that around. And we're just toasting those spices a little bit, getting a little bit of heat directly on them, just to really help bring in that depth that we're looking for, all right? Just about. 30, 40 seconds worth of getting these spices. And that is what your toasted spices look like with all your aromatics. Looking good. 
Next step, glaze the pan, de excuse me, deglaze the pan with uh, some chicken stock. We normally have some homemade chicken stock around, uh, but we've been making a lot of soups lately. Uh, one of our favorites is a, a hobo stew recipe, and well, running kind of low, so it's time to use the, uh, the backups here. All right, we're gonna use about a half a cup just to deglaze the pan. Scrape up all those yummy brown bits. And once we get it well scraped and deglazed here, we're gonna add the rest of this quart. Eh, maybe not the whole quart. About three cups worth. Can of diced tomatoes. And then we have an assortment of tomato sauces. Whenever we don't use up a full can of tomato sauce, we put it in a bag and it goes in the freezer. So we're gonna put about a can's worth of uh, frozen tomato sauce here into the chili. And we're gonna cook this until this has uh, all simmered down and it'll be time to add in our ground rabbit and hot sauce and beans, if you choose to have beans in your chili. We've got a good rolling simmer here on the chili base. Let's add our cooked ground rabbit back in, get it mixed up. Once this is fully incorporated, we'll start adding in the hot sauce. Now it's time for the magic. A little bit of uh, Frank's Red Hot. We use Frank's Red Hot because this is actually one of the cleanest pepper sauces uh, on the market, literally. It is just uh, peppers, vinegar, water, salt, garlic powder. So we're gonna start with a half cup and you can adjust for taste from there. If you don't like Frank's that much, use the sauce of your choice and uh, start with a quarter cup if you don't want it too hot. But the only way to get the real buffalo flavor, go with Frank's. All right, there we have it. Rabbit buffalo chili. We're gonna let this simmer for about another 30 minutes and then it's gonna get cooled down and we will have it for dinner tomorrow. And why tomorrow? Because everybody knows chili tastes better 24 hours later. Let's give it a quick taste, see if it needs any salt, pepper, uh, you know, any other seasonings. Clean spoon, you get some carrot, some celery, some tomato, bean, So good. Great, rich buffalo flavor using meat that we raised and processed here on our homestead. When it comes time to serve, gonna put it in bowls, offer avocado, tortillas, uh, sour cream, cheese, all those things that you might wanna add into your regular chili or that you like to have along with your buffalo wings. Another side that we really like to have with our buffalo chili is beer bread. One of the best recipes for beer bread, very simple. Total of four ingredients. Recipe is going to be in the description. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future updates. And until next time, God bless. Too hot? Oh. <laughs> Tastes good? Good. <laughs> All right. Mm -mm -mm.